All right, guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing an episode on API gateway to Lambda functions. I'm going to show you how to create a RESTful API gateway endpoint that's going to invoke a Lambda function and return some JSON all the way back to the client. So let's get started. So I'm going to start this out by creating a Lambda function and I'm going to call this Lambda function the transaction handler. And I'm going to code up the Lambda function so that I can take an event input that looks like this. This is the default event that you get when you set up a REST endpoint and invoke a Lambda function through API Gateway. There's a bunch of other parameters that come above and below this, but since we're going to be passing in the parameters through the query string, this is the only real section that we care about from the event object. From there, I'm going to set up a transactions resource and I'm going to set up a GET API. And that API is going to be configured such that it forwards requests to the Lambda function. And I'm going to code up the Lambda function such that it returns a hard-coded response. Um, in your applications, you may choose to do something with the query string parameters, like maybe call a database or do something in S3. But for this purpose, I'm just going to show you how to return a response back to the client. And then from there, I'm going to poke the endpoint and just basically invoke it from my browser. And you're going to see that the response is going to come all the way back the other side. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's head over to the console and get started. All right, folks, here we are in the console. So let's get into it. Heading over to the Lambda section. So let's start this out by creating our Lambda function. So going to create a function. We're going to be doing this one from scratch. We'll be calling this transaction processor. And this is going to be a Python 3.6 application. And for permissions, I just want some basic CloudWatch permissions um, because I'm going to be printing stuff to logs and I just want to verify that I have that permission. So luckily, if you select create a new role with basic Lambda permissions, the CloudWatch permission policy is included in that. So that's kind of a free gift for you. So you can go ahead and click on create function. And sometimes it takes a minute or so. So I'll come back when it's all done. All right. So after waiting a few moments, the function was successfully created. So let's head down to the code section where we can write our code. All right, so we got this uh, boilerplate stuff here. I can actually write it in Sublime and then copy and paste everything back into this um, IDE over here. So switching to Sublime text. So this is the kind of uh, boilerplate that we are starting with. So this function is gonna consist of four steps. So the first one is we need to parse out the query string parameters and then just print it out so we can see what's happening. So parse out, query string params. So I'm going to be passing in three query string parameters. I'm going to be passing in a transaction ID, a transaction type, and an amount. So let's try and capture that. So firstly, transaction ID, and that's equal to the events query string parameters and transaction ID. I'm going to copy that twice, come back here and say transaction type and just change that to type. And then amounts, so transaction amounts, and change that to amount. And then let's just print out all three. So transaction ID, wrap that in quotes. All right, again, twice. Okay, and then transaction type, and then finally amounts. All right, so that's good for step one. So second step is to construct the body of the response, and that's gonna be like a basic JSON object here. So construct the body of the response object. So let's just create an, em an empty object and then start filling in some values. So we're gonna be returning the values that were originally passed into us. Um, and then I'm gonna be adding a, a separate field at the bottom. So let's start with transaction response, um, transaction ID, and we'll set it to what was passed in. So transaction ID, and copy that, change this to type, and then change this to transaction type, copy that, set that to amount, 
and change this to transaction amount and copy that again. And I'm just gonna add a fun little message here. So message and let's say hello from Lambda land. Okay, and then we need to construct a HTTP response object. So let's do that. And we're gonna be filling in the body with this transaction response object that I just created. So first thing we need is a status code. Actually, let's just set this to empty first and set the status code to 200. And then set the headers initially as empty. I make a minor syntax error on line 25, but I come back to fix it later. And then on the headers, we need to set the content type to be application JSON. And then finally, we want to set the actual body. Body. And we need to convert our object into a string. So we're gonna use the JSON library and use json.dumpS and set our response object that we created up over here. And then the last step is just return it. And we do that. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna take this, copy it all out, move on over here. I'm gonna paste this in. All right, set that as save. All right, so Lambda is ready to go. So let's head over to the API Gateway section and create our resource. So going to API Gateway, gonna click on Get Started. And they kind of give you this tutorial thing if this is your first time here. I'd encourage you to actually check this out and try this on your own. It's really interesting and get to learn a lot about the capabilities of API Gateway. We're gonna be using like a very, very simple um, approach here. So we're gonna be using REST, that's good. We don't want this example where we select new API. I'll just call this transaction APIs. No description's fine. Endpoint type, um, this largely matters um, for kind of network connectivity reasons. Not gonna go into what these all mean, but I'm gonna be leaving this as default, just so you know what that means. Uh, create API. All right, cool. And then we're gonna create a resource, and that resource is gonna be called transactions. Leaving everything here as default. And from there, we need to create a method. And like I said in the intro, we're gonna be creating a get method. Click on checkbox. And then this is asking us where do we wanna send this request to. Um, so you can use the Lambda function like we're gonna do in this case. You can send it to an HTTP endpoint, which could be like an EC2 instance running maybe Nginx or something. And you wanna forward the request all the way there. Could be a mock, could be a separate AWS service. There's lots of uh, capabilities here. So Lambda function is good enough for us. And this is important. So you wanna use Lambda proxy integration. So this is gonna inject the HTTP request into the Lambda function event parameter. And that's what we're kind of parsing out on the Lambda side. So I'm gonna check that. And this is asking us which Lambda function do we wanna hook it up to? And we just start typing, there we go. So transaction processor, click on that guy. Default timeout's good, click on save. You're about to give API Gateway permission to invoke your Lambda, that's fine. Okay, and then in order to actually get this running, we need to deploy it. So while I'm still on the get section, I'm gonna to go to deploy API. And we don't have a stage, uh, typically most people do, but uh, we need to create one for this exercise. And a stage is useful if you wanna kind of logically separate your uh, APIs into maybe like a test environment or a production environment. Um, so I'm gonna say this is a test environment and just leave this stuff blank. Gonna click deploy and there we go. So this, this function is now deployed and connected to the Lambda function ready to serve track, traffic. So actually let's go expand this out and you click on the get function and you can see this is the URL endpoint. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna open up a separate tab and we're gonna hit this API and we're gonna pass in those query string parameters. So I think I said transaction ID, 
equals five and type equals purchase and amount equals 500. So if this works correctly, we should see a JSON response that has these same values mirrored five for the transaction ID type for purchase and amount being equal to 500. And we should also see that extra hello from Lambda land message. All right, and there we go. So again, we passed in the transaction ID type and amount, and we got the same transaction ID type and amount back, and also the response message, hello from land to land. So let's just quickly head over to the CloudWatch logs to verify everything looked as I thought it would. Go to CloudWatch, logs, transaction processor, log stream, and there we go, exactly what I did. So log in the transaction ID, the transaction type, and the transaction amount. So that about wraps this video up and thank you so much for watching and hopefully you did find this useful. And if you're already using or considering using API Gateway with Lambda functions, I'd love to hear about your use case in the comment sections below. Thanks again and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.